Hello, welcome to my channel Judge All Nation. In this video Christian Prince will made understanding and education about Islam to all Muslims. Also Christian Prince educates Muslims that in the Lord Jesus there is truth and no other. Now let's take a look and see what Christian Prince will tell you by arguing with Muslims. Enjoy watching this video and God bless you. Hello. Yes, my friend, you said there is somebody you want to call me? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, I spoke to you before, uh, Muhammad, right? Yeah, you did. And you left Islam, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, oh. but uh, you know, I, I said that I was going to study you yeah. know, more about Christianity. Okay. But uh, I just don't understand. Uh, you know, I have one question about, the, you know, the King Isaiah? Yeah. It says something like he was 22 and then he was 42. But like, how yeah. can, how, if it's the word of God, how can it have contradiction? Well, right? no, there, there's no contradiction. Always, if you know, you know, like as an example, if I say I, uh, I ruled uh, uh, 10 years, you know, and then in different place, I said, uh, we ruled uh, 40 years. There's, there's a place where you speak about the family. Well, can and there's you say a place, this, please? I'm so, okay. sorry, can you okay. say Okay, you see, when the person, as an example, there is there is many places in the Old Testament uh, where a king, he will not be named as a king unless he is, you know, he's in a certain age, which means if you are under the age, somebody else from the family will be the one who is a king temporarily, but not without a title, you know. So the mother of the king was ruling, but she is not the king, you know, he is the king. But because he is young, he cannot take the chair and he cannot be called the king. So when he was the king, simply, or let us say uh, officially he become a king, that is the official age. And actually we can solve this problem from the Quran. Do you know that the Quran speak about uh, the story of uh, the same person? Uh, no, I did not know this actually. Okay. Is it Isaiah is a son of Abraham? Well, honestly, I don't know if the Quran says that, but I'm going to take your word for that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we have hundreds of thousands listening to us. We will be in trouble if we say something that's true. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. so if, we, if we ask the Muslims, according to their book, uh, uh, you know, I mean, because you see, we, uh, all those stories from the Old Testament, you know, we will find there is some roots for them, uh, uh, or let's say, some of the roots stolen from the Christian books, from the Jewish books, and the Muslim, they put them in their books. Yeah, but that, I, that I have noticed, yeah, actually. But, and, example, and because now you don't, have, you don't have too much knowledge about it, I'm not going to go deep. But we, you know, we can refute any statement the Muslim, they say, from their books. And you know, already you are, you are a person who left Islam, but my friend, let us say for the sake of argument, the book you are reading from is not even God talking. Do you understand what I'm saying? When we say uh, the Bible, really, can, can okay, say again? when we say the, the Bible, as an example, in the Bible, there's a book, it's called Kings, right? Kings. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a book about history, what those kings, what they did. And this is not God talking. God is when he God talking, it says there, God said, the Lord said. This is about the Jews themselves reporting their own history. So let us say for the sake of argument. But, but wait, if it's just history, why is it in the, in the Bible? Because the Bible is a book of books. It's not one book. It's the book of books. Anything have to do with the nation of Israel. That's right. The relationship with God, because those books are reporting what those kings did, bad and good. You know, the filthy one, they say he was filthy. The good one, they say he was good. As simple as that. Even when David do wrong, even when Solomon do wrong, it says there, he was wrong. He was bad. He did this. He did that. So this is history. Same time, it's history have to do with God or connected to God. So it is a book of book. If we take all this book out from the Old Testament, nothing will change. It's just history. It's just to know. What 
previous generation did. But when God say, this is God said, nobody can touch that. And if, let us say, for the sake of argument, that was a wrong or error, that will not change anything. He was, uh, he was seven or he's 20. Because the word of God is different from what you are saying. The word of God is when God he say, not when a man he say. Okay. Are you with me? As an example, now the Muslims, they print the Quran and then they start collecting the Quran again. Why? Because there's an error in the printing machine, even with the computer today. You know, mm -hmm. I can show you in the news tons of time it's happened. So, but that will not affect the word of God. Because everybody knows that, this is an error, error in typing, you know. But here I'm not saying this error in typing, no. I'm saying that this is a wrong understanding because the people who they are talking, they are desperate trying to find an error. So look how desperate they went all the way to talk about a book from history. Well, if, I, if this is the case, here we go. We have it in front of us. Chapter 20, verse number 85. The summary. Oh, chapter 20 of, of what book? This is the Quran, chapter the Quran, chapter twenty, verse eighty-five. It says ah. that the summary is the one who misled them, but the summary wasn't exist at that time. <laughs> this is a clear evidence. Not his age was etc. and his age was etc. So, and this is God talking. This is not a rabbi writing history. I understand. Yeah. I, I just have I have two more questions, and uh, right. and I thank you that you take your time out of your day to answer this. Really appreciate it, but. Um, for example, also, I've wondering for a long time, you know, how come in the Old Testament, God, he was saying, it's allowed to have war. God, he said to Israel, go have war with these people. But then in the Second Testament, or New Testament, rather, it is for completely forbidden. No, it's not completely forbidden, and nowhere it's forbidden. And God, when he said to them, there's a reason, you see, you will find that those people, they are attacking them, killing them, and... Uh, 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 you know, always, uh, uh, you know, if I have a war with the enemy, I can justify my war easy. I can say anything about them. I can fabricate stories if I want to start a war. But you will notice that in the Old Testament that this war was uh, 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 against certain kind of people, not everybody. And those people, they don't want the Jews to live in peace. So you will notice that the Jews themselves, they went through a lot of horrible events. As an example, I'm sure you heard that the, the, the Persian, sorry, the, the, the Babylon, they took all the nation of the Jews as slaves. Is that correct? Yeah. The Egyptian did the same. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So in order to understand where we are living, we are not living in the backyard of today's world. Where even today world is made nobody safe. Here we go. The Russian are attacking the Ukrainian, you know, just because they are more powerful. So, and the only reason actually today People are not attacking each other because nobody can afford it. And there is some countries where they are massive, strong, and the little they have to obey. Like when Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait, ah, he justified. He says Kuwait is used to be part of Iraq. We will take it. So always in the time of war, the one who want to do aggression, he justify it so easy. But in the case of the Bible, you will, if you read carefully, you will see that there is a reason. And the reason is explained. The Bible explained better than me. So I advise you to read it. Same time, it is not forbidden for Christians to go for war. You got it wrong, my friend. The Bible, he said, the Bible but, says he, you cannot do Jesus. evil. No, you cannot do evil. Jesus said, I came, I came to complete, to fulfill, not to destroy. So, I mean, honestly, but like, but didn't he say something like, uh, like? Uh, if somebody slap you in the right hand, okay. This is a, this is a, this is your wrong understanding. In the time of the Rome, who was the one who was occupying Jerusalem at that time? The Roman, correct? The pagan Roman, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So at that time there was a law. It says if it's like now, you know, if you go not long time ago, you will see there's two guys are fighting by the sword, or by guns, right? And they bring witnesses. I don't know if you saw any of those movies, but this is true. When a man, he want to challenge a man, they bring witnesses, and whoever kill whoever, there's no responsibility. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay, but this is strange. I mean, why? There's no police. Why they are doing that? Well, this is, this is the law at that time. So, uh, in the time of the Messiah, there was a law that if you hit someone in his left cheek, you go to jail. 
So Jesus is saying to them, don't be violent, don't be stupid. I mean, just what, what, what the benefit? If he hit you in your right cheek, give him the other one. So he will go under the, the court. The police will deal with him. So there is a law. You are living in a, in, a, in, a, in a civil society. Don't be the same as the one who is in civil. But this is not about Jesus is telling us, you can beat me. If a Muslim now, he come to me and he want to beat me. Do you think I'm going to give him the other cheek? He got it wrong. I will make him shish kebab. <laughs> I, I promise you, you know, I will make him shish kebab. You, you beat me, you will get it. So this is the wrong understanding. The Messiah never said to us, you are being coward. He said, don't be evil, which means don't be violent in response to violent uh, uh, by seeking revenge. But he never said, don't defend yourself. As in Jesus, he said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. They said to him, Lord, we have two. He said, that's enough. Okay. So we have two swords. So Jesus was not making army, but they have swords. And those are the disciples of Jesus. So we Christians, we have swords, we have guns, and we are allowed to have it to defend ourselves, but not to do evil. So if somebody come to my house or your house and he want to rape your wife, are you going to turn the other cheek for him in your understanding or you will teach the man how to behave for the rest of his life? <laughs> I think you know the answer, but, right? Yeah, but but like how, how do I know then the difference? For example, like uh, in Matthew 5, 7, it says, uh, blessed are the merciful because they will be shown mercy. Like okay, how should I you, know can, you like can show mercy. That's not, you see, the, but the Bible is a book. It's not, it's not just a, a sentence. The Messiah, he says, the one who live by the sword shall die by the sword. That is justice. So if you are a person who come to me and you have your sword to live by it, just is to make you die by the sword. So the killer should be killed. As simple as that. That is justice. This has nothing to do with mercy now. Justice. Justice is the key of good life for every society. When there is no justice, the community is damaged. Do we agree? I mean, I hear, I hear what you're saying, but you know, isn't the whole thing that like we're living in grace and like you see, you, you, don't, if, you don't mix people, G but Jesus. Like, even but even if people do evil to us, shouldn't we just be like like I, I'm not saying be completely tolerant, take our take our home and all of that. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just saying like, you know, how how should I know? For example, like just because somebody beat me, like uh, slapped me, it don't mean that I that like basically just because you can doesn't mean that you should you understand okay but but you see you need to understand that there is people who you have to make a, a judgment in the moment there is people if you let them beat you once they will beat you again they want to stop you know so i can say if a person maybe he is just being stupid i mean like you know he's like uh, nervous or something he did something i will say to him forgive you but if i know that this person he think that i am being coward and now he will beat me again and again and he will not stop. Why? Because I gave him a wrong impression that he can beat me. So we should be a judge for the moment and the event and what happened. If this person deserves forgiveness, forgive. Don't respond. But you should be the judge. If the person you know, obviously, he is not going to stop then you have to do what you have to do. My friend, Jesus did not bring Aflaton city. You know the Aflaton? Fantasy city of perfection. Uh -huh. There's reality. We believe as a Christian that Satan is exist. Yeah. And Satan means evil. And evil mean can be practiced between people. So the reason we have law in the Old Testament and Jesus says, I came to fulfill, to complete, not to destroy, that means all the law is there. So we have the law for a reason. So if Jesus is totally against violence in the way you are trying to understand it, that means we should not kill the killer and we should not uh, punish the thief and we should not do anything, the rapist or etc. We should let them go. That's uh, forgiven your mercy. No, this is not what the Bible teach. The Bible teach that you have a blessing from God if you are merciful to forgive as an example when we pray as a christian we say our father art of heaven and right away we say forgive to us as we forgive to others because when you forgive you earn 
Forgiveness. Now, defending myself have nothing to do with forgiveness. Because you attack me first, still I can forgive you or not to forgive you. Defending myself back, I am not the one who need to be forgiven. It is you who attack me. You know what I mean? But like, don't you think like two wrongs doesn't make a right? No, this is not wrong. Defending yourself is not wrong. Defending yourself, nowhere in the Bible it says it's wrong. That's not true. So, defending yourself is your right because nobody have the right to take your soul from you, save God. And this is why in the Old Testament, you see the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. We don't have two gods. Who, he did yeah. not change his mind. So, it's the same God. So, no one have the right to rape your wife. No one have the right to steal your money. Nobody have a right to take your house. Nobody have the right to harm you. So defending yourself have nothing to do with not being merciful. You can be merciful, you know, and you are like you forgive the person, which means you don't have hate. But in the moment, I have to defend myself to be able later to forgive you. Otherwise, I will be dead. You know, if you if you are coming to shoot me, and I say to you, okay, shoot me. You know, may God forgive you. Or, you know, th this is what this is not, this is not uh, right. You know, but, this I don't, but I don't think it, like you understand. Like I'm, I'm not meaning like life or death situation. I mean like, like uh, for example, like my uh, one time I talked about uh, the Muslims when I realized that this uh, evil cult, and they threatened to come to my address and uh, and harm me. Mm -hmm. But like I. Obviously, I, I never think they, they they want to kill me. They just want to beat me. But like, uh, uh, basically, my I'm friend, how you know? Like, but how you know? Do you can you read the mind of a human being? No. Okay, how you know a person is coming to beat me? But he want to harm me. The harm me. You know, do, you never heard of somebody he, he died because of beating? That's true, actually. Yeah. I have I have cousins. Each one of them, he can put his hand in the basketball without jumping. One hit from his hand, they will make you shish kebab. One hit, you know, coming to beat you. You know, his their gun is like, their hand is like a gun. So a person coming to beat you depends who you are. Maybe if, what if you are an old person? If you are if you are a seventy years old man, or etc. One hit, you can die. One hit from a young person, young boy, teenage, to an old man, he might die. So it's not about if it's beating or not. It's about he have no right and you are not being evil by defending yourself. You have the right from God to defend yourself. He have no right to attack you. And Christianity don't encourage you to attack people or to do violence against them. But Christianity does not teach you to be coward and people, they can do anything they want to you. You see, in, in the, uh, when we read the stories about the disciple of Jesus, we will find that they are not resisting death. Why? As an example, when, when the Messiah himself, who is the one who came to arrest him? Uh, the Romans. But, they are, but those are the police, right? They are the police. Yeah. The Romans are the soldiers, the police. Okay, so is it their fault? Should I kill them? I mean, they are just obeying the order of the commander. They are the government. They are the rulers. So in this case, you cannot, because if you resist, you are killing innocent people who they have doing order. They don't even care for you as a. They don't even know you. I mean, they just they told them go and get this guy. So you have to be just. You have to be sure. You have to be careful, and you have to be the one who make a judgment. Based on the moment and based so on the event. basically, the Holy Spirit will lead me in the decision. Even if you are Christian, you know, let us say somebody. No, no it, I am Christian. Okay. Oh, you? I, I don't. I don't actually. I forgot already about you. So you you become a Christian like uh, when I talked to me long time ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Forgive me because you know many people talk to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't remember people really, but uh, my friend, uh, uh, still. Don't think that Christ will judge you badly for defending yourself. In I fact, mean, it might not saved by our, our action. No, no, this, this is not this is not about being saved now. It's not about being saved by action. No, 
You see, in fact, you might go to hell if you don't do an action. As an example, if I see a man raping a woman, and he did not even touch me. He did not say anything. Like let's say I'm walking in the park somewhere and I see a man attacking a woman, trying to rape her. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm a Christian. I cannot involve. If you do that, you are the devil himself. You are no Christian. The one who but cover, the no, one who wait, cover. So how, yeah. how does that make you go to hell? Like, I, I, like I, Because like you, allowed, I'm, I'm, you, I'm, you allow the crime to happen. You can do something. Uh, I'm not saying that you should not, but like we're saved by by faith, not by. Still, you don't have doing. faith because if you have faith, then you should have no fear to stand up against a criminal. Honestly, I think when when you're saying this, I think I've heard somewhere that like faith without works is dead. Exactly, uh, and what is the work? I mean, so you have faith and you believe that something wrong What uh, when you see it. Uh, 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 you know, you have to do something about it. You cannot just watch and say, I know my, none of my business. It's the same crime you do if you see somebody dying from hunger. You don't feed him. You don't do any action. You know, you're just being negative. But that means you're not a believer, you know? But where in the Bible does it say that, like, if you're not doing something, we can well, make there you is, there is, there is, there is, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, many. As an example, in in uh, First Peter, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's talking about if if you don't fight, uh, if we are going to be serious in our fight against uh, our adversary, uh, Satan, we must grow up deep in roots and stand against all evil. This is First Peter chapter five. So we have to stand against evil. Otherwise, we are not being truthful. What you watch a crime and you say I none of my business. What what kind of a believer this believer is? Well, I guess I have to to read more about this. But like, my point was not that like of course like you should do something about this. But I I don't really understand how this can send you to hell because like we. It, like what when, what sends you to you hell? Are... What sends you to hell is being selfish. Being selfish. This is about being selfish. You don't think about her, this poor woman. You think about yourself. He will hurt me. He will do something to me. He's a criminal. So you being selfish, you witness a is crime. Like when, like Jesus, he died for you because, like, when you were not perfect, he's perfect for you. And I don't, I don't, I don't say this as an excuse to do, to go do whatever you want. Like, this is not about being perfect. Nobody is perfect, my friend. But it is not right to say I'm a believer and you don't stand against evil. Because if you don't stand against evil, you are supporting evil. There's no two, there's there's no other way. Either you are with or against. Very simple. If I don't stand against evil, I am supporting evil. Very simple. Honestly, when thinking about this, I've heard somewhere, like, uh, doesn't the Bible say something like, uh, friendship with the world is uh, uh, enemy with God? Yes, but but uh, here you see uh, what I see that you are uh, uh, trying to mix mix things, uh, uh, and and, there, and there's no connection between them. If I am a person, okay, uh, let's see, you are uh, uh, you have a brother. All right, and your brother uh, one day uh, he asked you to take care of his house. This is not your house. Let us say, brother, not necessarily brother from your blood, you know, a, a Christian brother. He says, please take care of my house. This is the keys. And then you come and you find a thief inside the house. Are you going to tell the thief to take all the furniture? So what you would do? Stop him. But I thought we should not. Should be merciful. I mean, the thief, maybe he needs money. Maybe he's poor. <laughs> maybe we should tell him where the jewelries. Maybe life is not fair to him. Because we can find tons of excuses for a thief. You know? If you ask him, he will, he will, he will tell you a billion reasons to be a thief. So either we take side with what is right against what is wrong or we are not exist 
We cannot just go like a, live like a silicone and say, oh, this, I'm just a Christian. I don't care really what happened around me. That's not, not Christianity. No? Okay, but, but the last question before I leave. All right. Uh, and uh, like, uh, I trust you and all, but I think I, I have to also look at the sources myself. But like, uh, uh, you know, one, one question I, I always wonder is, you know, when I study about Christianity, I found like, for example, Mormonism, uh, uh, Jehovah Witness, uh, Oneness Christian, Catholic, Catholic, whatever, whatever. Like, how, how should I know? Like, which one is his right? Well, uh, uh, any, anyone, anyone who deny the Son and the Father is not a Christian. Anyone who teach other than the six scriptures is not a believer. Let him be cursed. The one who bring other scriptures than this. So let him be cursed for a reason. For simply, he is uh, serving the devil. So there is no need to check it out too much if a person bring in scriptures other than our scriptures. He is not following God. We have the Bible. At the same time, if let us say somebody has exactly the same Bible, but he changed some words, like Jehovah's Witnesses. So the word God became a God. A God being there's many gods, but this is not what we believe in. So anyone who brings other scriptures, and how he can do it even by just adding a few letters or taking a few letters, which means changing the meaning, he is no Christian. All right? All right. Yeah. But uh, I, I want to thank you. You're uh, welcome. My friend, Jehovah Witnesses, he, they have almost 90, maybe 97% exactly as our book. Almost. You know? They just add letter here, letter there, you know? And they damage everything. And they call themselves Jehovah Witnesses. You know, they, watch, they, they, they witness for Jehovah. But the fact they are not witnessing for Jehovah, this is a false cult, far away from the truth. And, you know, ask yourself, like, where did the, I mean, suddenly they are born from where, those people, you know? A person who hated Christianity, they decide to start a cult to destroy Christianity. And this is why the Jews, actually, in the time of Muhammad, they sponsor Muhammad. Because they thought, oh, this guy, he, is, he believe in Jesus, we don't believe in Jesus. Maybe it's, they thought he is just another cult who will divide the Christians and make the Christians weaker. So they sponsor him, they give him refuge. And then he killed them all. I see. All right. But, but uh, actually, wh while I'm here, um, uh, I know that this is not a really popular opinion by Christians. But like, what are the evidence that uh, the Bible has not been changed? Well, first of all, if the Bible been changed, uh, then uh, uh, you know we need to ask ourselves what is it changed about it. You know, like what exactly the change they are talking about in order to. To prove that somebody something happened, we have to have the very original copy from the author himself, and we compare word by word. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. So how anyone can do that? I mean, this is mission impossible. So this is just an assumption, theories. Somebody can say as he wish. Same when they speak to you about the Big Bang, something that nobody witnessed, nobody saw. And they, you know, they make theories, and the theories can, uh, people, they like theories, they love it. Just, just go right now, you know, make up a story. I saw a big foot in back of my yard. People will publish it everywhere, you know, people like, like those stories. So, if I want to prove something, proving something have to have academic way to prove it. If even, let us say, we discover now a manuscript is exist let us say 1800 years ago very close to the time of jesus and there is a chapter is not mentioned in the bible today that does not change anything because still okay. we will find yeah because simply see the idea the christianity is not just a statement he said she said is the belief is the faith is not let us say that the disciples they never wrote the book let us say they never wrote a book there's no book does that mean Christianity is dead no in fact the Christian the Christians the first Christians they were going around there's no books in their hands they were teaching preaching what they learned from Jesus is that correct yeah 
So Jesus came first, the book came next, not the opposite. So the one who preach, their preaching will come to us by book or by not, because simply what books is nothing except repeating what been said before. Do I agree? I agree. Okay. So my dad told me what his dad said. His dad told him what his dad said. His dad told him what his dad said. All what the book did do can give you more exact phrase and sentences. Because a human being can, you know, when he's telling a story, he can, like now we are explaining to you a verse in the Bible. I, I had to add some explanation, which is not really exactly what the words say one, one, one by one, but just to make you understand. So still the book, the book is not pages. Faith never was a book. We are not Muslims who believe God. He wrote a tablet. He put it between the eyes of Israfil because obviously Allah heaven full of thieves. So Allah he decided to be sure that nobody will steal the information. He looked the most fat angel. His name is Israfil. <laughs> he has so big eyes. The distance between his eyebrows is 500 years. So Allah he put the tablet there because even his heaven is not secure. This is silly and this is stupid. Jesus said, the earth and the heaven will be destroyed, but my word will not. He's not talking about a book. There was no book at that time. Correct? Mm. Uh, so he's talking about his teaching. It's not about a book. Book is not what we follow. Jesus is the one we follow. I, I agree. But but I'm just thinking like, uh, but like, uh, I don't know if, if this is true, but I'm guessing that we don't have the first ever ever written Bible okay let, let me explain to you you see the first time the Christians they become people who have little money let us say is when the king of Rome Constantine become a Christian before that the Christian they've been discriminated killed tortured burned alive or even in the best scenario they feed them to the cats correct so those people can they have a printed book somewhere everywhere no can even they carry books with them? No. And if they made a book, the book will be made from very cheap material. Because they're poor. But when the king himself become a, become a Christian, this is the first time they were able to make a valuable material book made from leather. It's a king. You know, the king give a command. That's it. So, this is the only time the Christian they were able to accomplish libraries and books and etc. Before that, they have manuscript written in a very cheap material. However, when they wrote the scriptures on the books, which is expensive material, they copy it from the previous one, which is exist at that time. But why they want to keep it? They were thinking that 2,000 years from now, people, they want to make a museum? <laughs> Nobody would think about this, right? So the so they copy what they have into, into more better format, better quality, and those, this, the manuscript we find. This is why we don't find the, 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 the one is written in a very cheap material, because even if you keep it in the shelf, time will destroy it. They used to use the burda, you know the burda. It's a, it's a, it's a paper made from leaves. And those, if you don't, if you use it or not, if you open it after like a hundred year or two hundred years, it will become dust. Like you know, it will collapse. It's a very cheap material. It's not really unless it's saved in a certain place. There's no humidity. There is no air. There's no so those books by the by the nature will be destroyed. You used it or not. So. We as a Christian, we did not save books to prove a point after 2000 years ago, after because we are copying books from books. This is our book. And when the old book is destroyed and damaged, well, who care? How many times you in your house when there's a book messed up and the pages is gone, you throw it in the, you know, throw it in the garbage. Why you want to keep it? Especially if you have a new book, the same book, but a new one. And the other one you cannot even read it no more so christians 
they were not thinking of somebody when I come 2000 years after says give us the original 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 that was not the purpose the purpose was is to carry on the message not the book mm. yeah I, I agree yeah and you know like uh, uh, maybe we should do the same as the the Egyptian the Egyptian they make a man stay for 3,000 years uh, you know like <laughs> in the grave right <laughs> So, but this is not the purpose, you know. We are not trying to make Jesus to be alive by by a mummy. He is alive. So the important is to carry on the message. It's not the book. The book is preserved by the copiers, not by a physical paper. Should be exist from the time of Jesus, because you notice that even Jesus, in his time, he was not writing books. Yeah, it's not him that wrote the Bible. So when Jesus is speak, he said that the earth and the heaven they will be destroyed but my word will not he is speaking about his teaching not about books because he never gave a book no books you know the messiah come first the book later written about the messiah and what he did so we can copy with honesty to generations what we have heard and what we you know what what we have we've been through you know, honestly, this last question wasn't really for me. It was more for my for my Muslim friends. Okay. Because At the same time, the Muslim didn't have a book. You see, the Muslim didn't have a single page of the Quran. Even even the Muslim today, as long as your, your friend, he said, uh, tell him to go to the Quran, page number A. There's a page in the Quran. Eight. A, A, A. It's not numbered. It's A, a letter A. Uh, depends, in the, depends in the Persian. I will show it to you on the screen. It says... This Mus'haf is written according to the recitation of Hafs. Go check Hafs. Hafs is more than 200 years after Muhammad. <laughs> so it is recitation, which means they didn't even have the book of Hafs. Okay, so what we have? According to Hafs, the son of Suleiman, Ibn al-Maghira, al-Asad al-Kufi, According to the recitation of Asim ibn Abi Najud al Kufi al Tabi, according to Abi Abdul Rahman, Abu Abd Abdullah ibn Habib al Sulma, according to Uthman ibn Affan, according to Ali, according to Yazid ibn Thabit, according to Ibn Kab, according to the Prophet. All those according. And the Muslim, they say to you, How you accept the Bible according to John? <laughs> <laughs> You know, so according to John, John, who was a real witness of Jesus, he saw that he, he saw he saw that the nails in his hand. He, he said, he said, we saw it, we touch it. According to John, they said to you, John, who had written the book according to history about 30, 40 years after Jesus. How you accept that? And then they bring you a guy. He came 600 years after Jesus. And then his book, we cannot be find it anywhere in the world. Not a single page. Or what they have recitation, and nobody have the book of of uh, of Asim. Nobody have it. It's just recitation. Even here it says riwayat, riwayat, the telling, the telling, not the book. There's no book, and not and to make it more horrible, if you search right now, I don't know, I forgot. Do you speak Arabic? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, if you search about Hafs, they will say to you Hafs. The Muslim themselves in their book they say Hafs kana kaza. Do you know what kaza mean? No, I'm sorry. Liar. Really? Oh, yeah. You're joking, right? No, 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 no. Hafs is a kadhab. And this is written by them. Even Al-Bukhari himself, he said Hafs, his hadith is rejected because he is a kadhab. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So they took the Quran. And the funny is, they don't accept any hadith from him because he is a fraud. But they accept the Quran from him. Let me read for you. Here we go. I just search in Google. Hafs Naqil al Quran. Actually, you know what? Let me let me use Google Translation. Give me a second. Before we do that, um, uh, just uh, like uh, what are the like top five most uh, popular versions of the Quran? Because my keep, my friends keep insisting that they've never been changed, but that's bullshit. Well, even Muhammad he says Allah he gave him the Quran in seven letters, right? So is he saying that Muhammad is liar? liar? So. The question should be given to him. But anyway, there's uh, there's tons of ver uh, versions of the Quran. 
and the version as an example found in Samarkand is different from the Quran found in Yemen is different from the Quran is reading today the Quran uh, there's many Qurans different from the Quran the most popular Quran Hafs Quran which is in uh, in Morocco the one in Tunisia is different the one in Libya is different everybody has his own Quran and even Uthman himself and the Muslim agree Uthman himself he burned all the other Quran correct Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so I mean, here it says Hafs. Let me use Google Translation for those who do not cannot read. Hafs. He's a liar. And this is the reference. Look. Al Bukhari, great. The book of Al Bukhari, great history. Part number two, page number 363. He was a thief and a liar. <laughs> we go down. Hafs ibn Sulaiman al Asadi blah 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 blah. On the authority of Al Qama uh, blah blah blah, uh, he said uh, they left him, which means they, they don't listen to his hadith because he's a liar, you know. So his his hadith is, is rejected. Anything he say because he's a liar. Al Bukhari, small history. This is the Google translation, part number two, page number two three three three. Hafs ibn Sulaiman Abu Umar uh, blah 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 blah. He is Hafs ibn Dawood. Uh, I think the translation here is mi uh, missed something. I think here it says Sakatu uh, Anhu. Okay, Sakatu Anhu. So translation is messed up. In Arabic it says Sakatu uh, Anhu, which means and uh, and had his hadith is munkar. Look, his hadith is munkar, which means totally rejected, like disgusting, not only rejected, you know. Uh, and here again, you know, uh, they left him, you know, uh, 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 page number 348, uh, uh, the weak sunnah of at al Alabani. Hafs ibn Sulaiman al-Asadi, etc., etc., uh, he said that Hafs ibn Sulaiman, uh, he took books from me and he did not return it. He said he used to take people books and copy them, which means he take books, he claimed that he is the author. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the list is long. This is their books. I mean, imagine this is their books. They are saying that the one who gave them the Quran today is a scumbag. Oh How in the world do you say that about the one who gave you the Quran? Yeah, that's funny. His hadith, you know, I mean, they are like they are all over him and all those who they are saying those things are big names in Islam big names are not those are not uh, like uh, normal people you know so you will see here all kind of names appearing and they are the one who's speaking badly about this person and none of them none of them is saying something good about him and all those are trustworthy for Muslims so how we can take the Quran from someone, the Muslim himself accuse him, not only not only him, even his father, his stepfather is the same, he's a scumbag. So they are saying him and his father are both are liars. Okay, and then we take the Quran from them. Wow. I never wow. knew this honestly. Yeah. But you know, one thing I've noticed about Islam is that, you know, they believe in this just because they're, they have been taught this since birth. It's like a uh, Nazi. They believe in this only because they were they were uh, forced to believe in this. Otherwise, they get beating. Yeah, you know, like uh, if you live in a society where there's no no there's no space for thinking, and then you 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 you, you know thinking will, st will establish some kind of phobia in your head, fear, because if I start thinking, they will kill me, they will harm me. I better not to think about it. I just follow. And this is why you see all the Muslims are copy paste of each other. They have the same question, they have the same answer, they have the same article, and they have the same prophet who everybody prays him. He's perfect in everything. Yesterday, the one who called me, he said that his prophet was wrong here, he was wrong there, he was wrong. And then he called today, he says, hey, This was his mistake not to say that, you know, he should not. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's afraid that those who heard him from the Muslims will go after him and he will never be forgiven for what he said. But he was saying the truth somehow. He's trying to say he's a prophet, he's a false prophet, but he don't dare. He said he was wrong. But you cannot be wrong. 
prophet about prophecy prophesying is what make a prophet prophet so if your prophecy turned to be wrong as he say that mean his prophecy is false and he is a false prophet they don't dare to say it anyway my friend thank you for calling and uh, if you if you have your muslim friend let him call me yeah uh, honestly I, like the only problem is i don't know if he's that good in english so all right uh, but uh, in worst case scenario i guess i can translate for him would that be okay no problem okay. uh, if you don't you know if you don't speak english maybe you can find me other person who speak english what i can say no no, yeah. no he, he can speak english but i don't know if he's that good at it but okay in worst case worst case scenario can can i just translate it for him all right no problem you can join us in the conversation if in case all right take care my friend thank you you're welcome thank you so much and god bless you god bless you take care All right, let's see if there is any Muslim. Yeah, I forget, you know, I think I'm looking now. We chatted before last time. The first time this gentleman, he called me. He's a nice guy, right? He, saw, <laughs> he said to me, call me if you are not coward. Isn't it amazing that a person, he call you coward and then he leave Islam and then he become a Christian and this is how the conversation start call me if you're not coward that is something isn't it call me if you are not coward let me uh, look you know you are coward and we spoke look here we have all the timing I see the timeline how many time we have calls look like he called me many times one is 54 minute one is an hour and 14 minute one is four minute uh, here yeah it looks like this is all the conversation here yeah but they call your names in the beginning but then when they see the truth the truth will set them free all right Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning. The cross before me, the world.